one second. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, uh, to a book talk that I promise has a guaranteed fairy tale ending. <laughs> I am here with best selling and beloved author Sarah Milanowski. Hi, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> and for this book, her collaborative partner, illustrator, and author Anu Shahan, to talk about their newest book. Whatever After the Graphic Novel, Fairest of All, the very first graphic novel adaptation of Sarah Milanowski's Whatever After series. Thank you to schools for sending in some of the questions in advance. We're going to get through them as we get through the talk. My name is Bren Lopez. I am the manager of Children's Book World in Los Angeles, where we celebrate diversity, knowledge, and enrichment through stories. It's a place where every young reader can see themselves and each other represented on our bookshelves and then become a part of our book-loving community. Today, we're talking to not just one, but two book creators. How are you both doing this morning? Great. Good. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yes. Good, How are you? Uh, I'm doing really, really well. Now, uh, uh, I'm going to go into your biographies, but the other thing I love is the Canadian connection. Hello, yeah. Canada. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have two Canadian born uh, author illustrators of uh, people here today. So, uh, Sarah Milanowski. Um, has written the New York Times bestselling middle grade series, Whatever After, the middle grade series, Upside Down Magic with Lauren Miracle and Emily Jenkins, the Best Wishes series with so far, Debbie Rigaud, Christina Soon-Tornvat, and coming soon, Hannah Kahn, um, and many other novels for teens as well. Sarah, as your books have been translated into 29 languages, probably counting, I'm sure there's new ones coming all the time. <laughs> um, and you live here in Los Angeles with your husband and two daughters um yes. and you can tell us more as we go into it and i go to the bookstore all the time and you and she is part of our book loving community an essential part of our book loving community <laughs> um people still talk about your talk with uh danielle clayton which was so oh, great last last that year was um anu shahan is a punjabi canadian illustrator and video game artist anu recently illustrated the graphic novel adaptation of the new york times best-selling book aru shah and the end of the time and the end of time which flies off our our uh, shelves here nice. um <laughs> and your picture book debut i mean you have done picture books as an illustrator for other people's stories but this is your picture debut as author and illustrator and it's so beautiful hair oil magic um and then you have done art for editorial for so many uh, incredible uh, publications around the world. Um, and you live in Vancouver, British Columbia. That's right. Well, welcome to you both. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and put myself off for a second so you can tell us uh, the amazing story of this collaboration. Awesome. Hi, guys. I have a presentation here that we created. So I'm going to figure out how to put that on. Just give me one second. And here we go. Okay. And does that work? It is not showing as being okay. shared yet. Well then that should there it goes. Go. Okay, amazing. So everyone can see. <laughs> yeah, when tech works, it's always so exciting. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Okay. So um, uh, I am, uh, so here is the book that we created together. I am Sarah. <laughs> and a new wave. Can you guys see a new as well? I'm not sure what you can actually see on screen, but hopefully you can see everything. Um, and I grew up in Montreal, Canada. Here is my class. You can see me in the front row. I was always pretty short, so I was always in the front row. Um, and I love to read growing up. My favorite book um, was called This Can't Be Happening at McDonald's Hall, written by another author named <laughs> Gordon Corman, another Canadian author. Uh, and I loved reading. I, I, I loved funny books. And I also loved to write. And here are some of the books that I wrote when I was your age, including Ahead of Time, Sugarton Elementary, Super Squirt. I was always reading different books. I was writing different stories. Um, you can see that I even use my class picture as my cover art in this case. Um, <laughs> And then uh, I, I asked my mom to type up one of my stories for me, and we sent that to Bantam Books. And this was the first rejection letter that I got from a publisher way back in 1987. But they told me, uh, you know, thank you for trying, but to keep trying and not to be discouraged. And I wasn't. I decided I would keep writing um, and keep trying. And now I'm the author of 
50 different novels. So my advice is to keep trying. Eventually, it, you can to get published if you want to be a writer. <laughs> Hey everyone, so I'm Anu. Uh, I'm the illustrator of this project. Um, I just wanted to share some of my early art from things that I was drawing when I was your age. So around that time, I was really into fantasy, into like anime. I loved Sailor Moon. I also loved just like very medieval fantasy dragons, unicorns, all that stuff. That was something that I was really into and that was reflected through my art. Should I? Yeah, or yeah. I can't, I can't actually see you now. So. Oh no, so I'll just say next. <laughs> Good, say next. Okay. Um, also, when I was your age, these are some of my favorite books. Um, I loved The Babysitter's Club so much when I was a kid. I also really loved Sweet Valley Twins. Um, I have an older sister who I think is around Sarah's age. And so I just like stole all her books and read all of them. <laughs> um, but at the time when I was your age, I also um, loved Animorphs. I loved Goosebumps. Um, I also really was starting to slowly get into manga as well and comic books. I already really loved like the X-Men and stuff like that. But this was around the time again, like Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, all that stuff. It wasn't as common to find translated manga back then. Um, making myself sound kind of old here, but in the in the late 90s, right? So um, it was a, a lot of it was just whatever I could find, um, but I just devoured these books in particular. Uh, okay, next. So as I got older, um, after I graduated university, huge, huge flash forward, um, I, when I started working in the games industry, that's when I started to see how little representation there was in animation, books, etc. I was always aware of it. But now that I was in the industry, I felt empowered to be able to create characters who I wanted to create. And like, I wanted to see myself um, in art as well. So these are four examples of personal pieces of mine. Um, and I started sharing my work online on social media under the name Animation around 2015. Um, and since then, I've been really fortunate to be able to like gain a following of people who really resonate with my art and like like to champion and celebrate diversity in their art as well. So that's been something that's really nice and it's honestly led me to becoming an illustrator slash author of books. Uh, next. So these are all the books that I've contributed to so far. Um, I, had, I still, I'm still a little early in my career. I mean, not really, I've been doing this for a few years. Um, one thing a lot of people don't understand or know is that illustrating books is a very long process. Um, publishing books in general is way longer than people expect. Um, illustrating books takes a very long time, but it's a very rewarding job, especially when you cut, see everything come together. Uh, Sarah and I are gonna kind of get into the details of some of the behind the scenes of whatever after in a sec. Um, but this is something, yeah, so these are like, I love seeing this slide because I just love seeing all the color and all like the different characters. Um, Hair Oil Magic is a book that I wrote and illustrated, just came out in February, which I'm really proud of. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's more on the way. Next. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about whatever after. So um, there are 18 books in this series so far. And in the series, Abby and her brother Jonah fall into different fairy tales, mess them up, and then have to help the characters find new happy ending endings. And every single book is a different story. So in the first one, it is Snow White. They fall into the story of Snow White. And you can see here, this is the original cover. And then here is the adaptation. And in this one, Abby and Jonah, because it's the first one in the series, they don't know yet that they're going to end up in fairy tales. They, there's a hissing in the basement um, and they go downstairs and they knock on their door, on their mirror three times and they get pulled into a, they get pulled into a forest. Um, and they don't know where they are and they're wandering through the forest and they see 
um, they see a scary looking woman trying to give another girl who looks kind of familiar an apple. Um, and they end up interrupting the story and asking if they can have the apple instead. And Snow White slams the door, doesn't take the apple. And if she doesn't eat the apple, she doesn't get poisoned. If she doesn't get poisoned, then she doesn't die. And then the prince can't bring her back to life. And then the whole fairy tale doesn't happen. So they realize they have to help her find a new happy ending behind both the prose novel and also the graphic novel because it's a pretty um it's a it, it, the, the adaptation follows the story um so here are some early concepts of character design for the graphic novel one of the very first things that i did was take abby as a character and try to create her in my own style. Like how do I want her to be represented in the graphic novels? This is one of the very first ones I did. Um, another thing I did was taking some of the dwarves. Um, we wanted all the dwarves to look very different. Like in the cartoon movie, um, they're all, you know, like they're all old men and they all kind of have like the same outfit, like different variations. But in the book, what I really liked is that all the dwarves are completely different, right? So that was a fun challenge as well, just coming up with different outfits for each one to kind of reflect their individual personalities. Uh, next. So here's a lineup of all the dwarves. Um, and then each one, yeah, as you can see, different ages. And like some of them have like <laughs> weapons, some of them have pink hair. Like it was really fun to kind of come up with that with uh, Sarah and the whole team. And then um, at the bottom are some rough sketches that I did of Abby, Jonah, the Evil Queen, Snow White, and the Prince. Um, so this is this was when I was in my character design phase when I was trying to come up with the way I wanted them to look, the outfits that they wear in the book. Um, I also did this rough color pass for the dwarves and the characters for Bethany Crandall, who was our amazing colorist. Um, so she would have something to kind of work from. Um, but of course, um, when you look at the book, you'll see some of these colors kind of changed. And that's honestly just part of the process of books. Like sometimes the colors that you suggest end up changing and it's always for the better because there's an entire team of art directors and like creatives on and like, it's just like, it's a very, very collaborative process when it comes to making books. Next. So... <laughs> this is um, a bunch of sketches of cover designs for the graphic novel. Um, this was an interesting challenge. Um, I actually worked on these after I had already illustrated the entire book. So these were a bunch of concepts that I came up with to kind of see how we wanted the cover to look. I was given some kind of basic guideline, obviously Abby in the middle with like things kind of happening around her. Um, I, so I'll tell you guys my favorite, which <laughs> is the ninth one. Um, that's Abby with like, she's kind of looking behind her back with Snow and Jonah. And then there's like a tree with the castle in the background. Um, I also like the one of her banging on the window, like get me out of here. <laughs> and I also really like, um, if you look at the ones with like the purple mirror in the background, number three with her and Snow. Um, I was just like more into like a dynamic look. So I, <laughs> I guess Sarah, you can comment it on, you can comment on this too. It's really funny when you draw so many or when you're writing too, like you come up with so many different concepts and then the one that ends up getting picked is the one that completely wasn't your first choice at all. Um, yeah, you know what? It's also what's so funny in this, in this process, which I don't know if people realize, but when you're working on a graphic novel, the, the author and the illustrator don't actually talk, okay? Yeah. This, and this is very different than, I, I've collaborated on lots of other books when I've written with other authors and we're talking every day, but in illustrated novels and in graphic novels, the, the publishing house, because they, they find the illustrator to work on the project, keeps everyone separate. So, like, honestly, the first time Anu and I talked, really, was last night. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, our first kind of, like, solo, just, like, hanging out kind of talk. <laughs> yes, which is really unusual. So, um, she had no idea what I was seeing, and I actually have not... I had not seen any of these concepts. I only saw the one that is the final 
one of her standing in front of, of the of the castle. So a lot of stuff doesn't come to me either. It goes to the designer, it goes to the editor. There's a lot of other stuff and it did, I never saw these. I love some of the other ones too. There's so many decisions that come, like, you know, the, the uh, Scholastic, the publisher, either talks to their sales reps or they talk to, maybe they do a focus group with kids. I don't know exactly what they do, but they try to figure out what they think is going to sell the best mm -hmm. uh, in their, you know, to, to their readers. I really mm -hmm. actually wanted Jonah to be on the cover, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I was also told no. But uh, maybe one day Jonah will be on the cover. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can do like a special re-release cover or something. But what's funny, in, in international editions of, so in the, in the original Whatever After books, uh, you know, it's just Abby on the cover as well, mm -hmm. but in a lot of the international translation, it's Abby and Jonah. Mm -hmm. um, so really different, you know, different markets want different things on their on their um, on their covers mm -hmm. all right so let me switch to the next one so this is kind of related it's a bit, little bit about the process of how this gets done so here this is a scene um, where snow is going to jump out of the castle and this is right from the, the original novel the prose so that's like that's the original and then what people don't know is that I actually didn't do the adaptation so Scholastic hired a woman named Meredith Russo to do the adaptation in the same way that like in scripts in Hollywood are usually written by someone else not the author often an adaptation is written by someone else so uh, she took this and then um, she worked on an outline. So here is an outline of the novel in terms of like how many, what, what's going to happen on every page. You can, you can see I starred something here. For this page, it just says 106, 107. They use the sheet to get down snow first, then Jonah, you know, Abby jumps. So that's um, j just what we got. So my editor and I read over the whole outline and we made notes and went back and forth. Then Meredith wrote the actual script. So here you can see the script, and this is for that first page, 104, where you can where it describes by panel what's actually going, you know, should have what, what she thinks should happen in everyone, including dialogue. And then Yeah. And then I so that's what I got was which was the outline. Um, and then I went from there and then started breaking it up into panels on the page. So it's kind of like storyboarding for animation, like taking, it's basically like a visualized script. Like the very, the very rough sketches are like just visualizing the script. And so the challenge is to, especially with a scene like this, it's a very actiony scene. So making it appealing, making it, you know, feel like their lives are on the line, like they're jumping out of like a window on a, on the castle. Um, so, and making it fun. Right. So, um, and then if you press ahead, Sarah, um, the next part is cleaning up the lines, but then also, um, working to add, so I didn't do the speech bubbles either. So I just did the illustrations. So when I saw the, um, speech bubbles, Play, uh, paste it into the frames that gave me an opportunity to be like oh um, I should shift things around because this one thing is getting um, hidden by one of these speech bubbles or I would ask the editing team hey can we please kind of move this bubble over because I don't like how it's blocking this thing that I think is really pivotal to this scene etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so the way it worked was after I sketched the entire book uh, that's when there were kind of back and forth revisions that's when the speech bubbles were added, more revisions. And then once everyone was okay with it, I went in and I cleaned up the lines like here. And then, and then it was colored by Bethany, um, who I think did an incredible job. Um, and it just like, yeah, so like it, it really does take a team of people for each page to come together. And it's, it's really cool to see it, to see it like this. And I'm just going to show you guys a little animation of this page that Scholastic made as a promo thing, but it's so cool. And this is exactly the scene that we were talking about. Fun. 
Yeah. <laughs> I watched that like 10 times. I was like, that is so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. And then I just thought it'd be so fun to show like the end of it, how we got that scene, which is fun. Obviously yeah. in the actual graphic novel, it, it you know, it doesn't move, but, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that fun. would be really cool if like one day it's like, I, would be. Graphic novels. I feel like the, at the right technology is going, like it's going to happen someday. Hundred percent. <laughs> so, and then the last slide, we're just going to show you guys what we have. We have a lot of stuff coming up because we're both very prolific. So I have um, uh, the next whatever after Liar Liar, where they fall into Pinocchio, coming out in July. I have my first picture book uh, called um, A Dragon for Hanukkah, which I didn't do the art. Obviously, I just wrote the um, the text. And then I have the next Best Wishes, uh, which is the fourth book in my uh, Best Wishes series, which I co-wrote with Henrik. And uh, my next picture book that I worked on uh, is called Henna Is, and it's coming out in July 2024. I could have just said July. It's 2024. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so it's the sequel to uh, Dupatta Is, and both books were written by Marzia Abbas, and both were illustrated by me. So excited for that one to come out. Awesome. Um... And here is if you're if you're a fan, if your parents want to follow us on Instagram or find us for upcoming events, here is our information. Yeah. And now I'm going to stop sharing and then be able to see you guys. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was really, really great. Um, so I want to uh, I want to ask about a couple different things. Um, one about your individual journeys, you sort of talked a little bit about it. Um, you're as a young writer, because we have a lot of young writers and a young, a lot of young artists who are out there who are wanting to take their own, begin their own process. What was it like for you as a young author, Sarah, you started really young writing your own stories. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like for you as a young writer? What were you, and the questions they want to know are really about like, Okay, what did you use a pencil? Did you use a pen? Were you writing in a notebook? Were you typing it? Were you on a you know what what was the best your way of doing it that really worked for you and helped your ideas flow? Um, well, I didn't have my own computer when I was younger. I mean, it was a little, no nobody. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is was actually a computer programmer, so we did have a terminal in the house. So I that probably was huge. I, it was very oh. large, um, and it was in the basement. And so I did actually start typing earlier than most people did, I think. But um, at first, I wrote, you know, by pencil. But now, as soon as I, as soon as I ended up with my own computer or access more access to a computer, I started typing. And now I only write you know, on a computer. I can't even really think by hand. Um, I do everything in Word. I know there's fancier stuff we use for writing, but I pretty much always write in Word, unless I'm co-writing, in which case I write in Google Docs, because that way that I could, you know, share stuff with other with other people. But I, I'll tell you a little bit, my process um, now uh, is, so I've written 50 books. The first book was, was, different. I just kind of wrote a little bit, not sure what was going to happen next. But now I'm a big believer in outlining. Um, so I always outline first, I brainstorm what I want the book to be, then I outline, usually about 10 to 20 pages. Um, and then I write my first draft, and I just go through the whole draft, I don't stop, I don't edit, I write the whole thing. And then I go back and revise. Um, and that the reason I do that is first because I like to outline. I don't get writer's block that way. Mm -hmm. My writer's block comes before starting. Like I'll put it off, something off and off and off, and like not wanting to actually sit down until I force myself to actually start. But once I'm start, once I'm in it, then I write. I, you know, I always know what happens next because I have the outline. So, and I also I, I give myself permission to jump around. Like if I if I want to write something and I'm not interested in the scene that I'm supposed to be doing, I'll write a scene later on. It doesn't matter. And then I, I just move in and I write, you know, whatever I feel like doing, but I usually write in a pretty linear fashion. I knew, as a young uh, girl, you were, you know, creating your artwork. I love that you were interested in, in uh, manga and, and anime and that sort of thing. And I know I would, you actually went on a solo trip 
to Japan, right? What I did. Uh, and what was that like for you? Because obviously that was part of like your passion as a young person. What was that experience like for you to go on that j- journey? Um, so that was 2017. Um, and I'm so glad that I chose Japan as like a solo trip destination. It was it was definitely a dream come true because I a felt really safe traveling to Japan. Um, obviously, I prepared a lot. Um, but it was so cool because I feel like I actually just went, came back from Japan. I was there for um, a week um, over spring break. So that was my second time there. But the first time, it was really nice because I feel like Japan truly has so many things for different people. Like, yeah, there's a lot of, obviously, that's where anime is from. That's where Studio Ghibli is from. Um, but there's also so much culture, so much history. And I feel like it was such an eye-opening experience to see all this art that I grew up really admiring, but to also just like really immerse myself in this culture that I had only ever really heard about. And then seeing it from my own eyes was also really interesting as well. Um, I love I love to travel. Um, I haven't traveled much in the last few years, obviously, because of mm-hmm. world circumstances, but <laughs> seeing different um, cultures, different countries, like it's really something that I love and it's a privilege so something whenever I'm able to do it like I love doing it um but I do remember coming back from that trip feeling very inspired to draw so that was really cool it's interesting because I think that um you know um we talked about Studio Ghibli and and uh anime and manga but the influence that that has actually had because for so many um children regardless of the culture that they're from or the place that they're raised in they're being influenced and impacted by a different culture, artists yeah. and, and authors of a different culture. And it has this incredible influence on it. And I can only imagine that for um, authors and illustrators of um, cultures that don't get represented as much in, um, in or haven't been represented as much in books and artwork, that this was that how, how that can be inspiring to you mm-hmm. to be able to create your own uh, f- histories and stories within within books. Did you find that the case? Yeah. Um, so I guess like a really good example of that is my book that just came out, Hair Oil Magic. Um, that was like a dream of mine for many, many years to write and illustrate my own book. And I kind of knew I wanted it to be about hair oiling because that's such a intergenerational ritual that I grew up um, experiencing so many other South Asian people. It's like a, I think there's many cultures, honestly, around the world that kind of have like their own hair oil and practices. Um, but honestly, like, yeah, it's something that it is like a cultural experience. But at the end of the day, I wanted that book to just be about a family who happens to be, you know, South Asian. Like it's not, this is just a South Asian experience. I wanted it to be, you know, if they just live in a house and they hang out and they have a puppy and he's really cute. And like, I, like, I just want to normalize that because I grew up in Surrey, BC, which has an gigantic South Asian population, specifically Punjabi. And I felt like it was me, this is my chance to kind of represent my community in a book. And so I feel like I was able to do that, but I want to keep doing that. And and I'm starting to see more authors and illustrators represent their communities. Like, it's not like, okay, I did it once. Bye, everybody, we're done. Like, I don't have to do it anymore. Like, no, I want to continue to keep doing it, like, for as long as I can. but at the same time, it's really nice um, being an illustrator to take on different projects. Like working with Sarah was a dream, right? And like working on all these other projects. Like when I look at them all lined up, I'm like each one, like it was so different and it was they were all really cool to work on. And one last question regarding your process for kids out there, particularly young artists, um, you don't, you do do uh, sketches uh, by hand initially, I know, yeah. but but how do you actually prefer to create your artwork? And uh, and also, if you could let people know, maybe a starter program for kids. You know, obviously they're not going to get the professional programs necessarily. But what would be a good starter program for doing digital art? Okay, so I actually still really like drawing on paper. It's my it's my preferred way of sketching. When I'm just like doodling, sketching, trying to come up with new ideas, I like to do it on paper and just pencil, paper, like in my sketchbook. Um, If I find an idea I really like, I start to run with it. Then I transfer it to my iPad and start sketching on there or on my computer. I have a Cintiq tablet. 
Um, I, so I work in the video game industry, so I need a Cintiq tablet to do my day job. And I have Photoshop on here, and then I can kind of like draw on my screen. Um, I wish I had stuff like that when I was a kid. <laughs> um, but uh, I would say a good way to start, if any of your parents have like an iPad and they let you use it, uh, there's this really great program called Procreate, which is a pretty affordable, I would say, illustration. So, uh, I only stand for my daughter. <laughs> yeah, Procreate and uh, for the iPad Pro. It's like, it's not as expensive as Photoshop. I actually don't recommend Photoshop because it's just so expensive. It's more of an industry tool at this point. Um, if any of you want to pursue art, I feel like in high school, in university, you'll be introduced to Photoshop. Obviously, if you can get your hands on it, cool, but I think Procreate is very accessible if you have an iPad. Um, if you have iPads at your school, if you don't have one at home, perhaps like your teachers can help you out. Um, I know that it's hard to say, hey guys, just get an iPad and work on there because, you know, iPads are super expensive, right? So I think there's other ones called Sketchbook Pro, which might be a better, because um, you can, I think you can get that on any tablet. It doesn't have to be an iPad. Uh, Procreate's only on the iPad. Um, if you can get a, um, I don't have one with me right now, but you can buy these like little tablets, like a bamboo tablet. You can hook that up onto your computer at home or laptop, and you can draw on there as well using um, uh, illustration software on your computer as well. That's that, that you, both for both of you, the, the way that you actually create and do these things is so inspiring for, for young kids because they really do want to be able to do it, but they can get frustrated if things don't happen, it's, you know, the, the way. Yeah. And you know, let's talk about that journey. Sarah, do you still get rejected from publishers when you get, <laughs> or do, do they all just say, oh, it's Sarah Milanowski, publish it? I mean, no, I, I'm constantly pitching stuff. I just pitched something. I just pitched an idea. I don't think I could should talk about what to Scholastic. And they were like, well, we don't know if this is exactly what we should be doing now. So let's do something else instead. So it's it's still it's still a process. <laughs> do you get frustrated though? What how how do you handle that for your mental well-being? What's the process for you of being able to bounce back from something? A um, I think I have a lot of stuff going on, and I think that's always been you know, there's never, I, I never put all of my eggs in one basket in terms of writing. I mean, I have four books coming out. So I think that makes it easier to handle because if something doesn't do well, or if something, you know, if there's a problem with one book, then I have something else already on the table. So I don't want to be in the situation when I read a book. I mean, I know some writers, I, I, in some ways, writing a book every two years is great. And if you can financially uh, you know, that can support you. Fantastic. Great. Um, mm -hmm. That's amazing for them. But I, <laughs> I always find that very stressful um, just waiting on that one book every two years, because what if nobody buys that book and then what you have nothing else on the table? So I like to always be working on lots of stuff. And I'm the type of person mm -hmm. who has a ton of ideas. So, I, I mean, I think it's definitely, you know, you don't want to start 10 projects and not finish them. But I like to have a few things in the hopper. <laughs> How old were you when you wrote that first, when you submitted that first book with your mom writing to Scholastic? That first book was probably, I was probably in fourth or fifth grade. I was 10 because it's at 87. So yeah, I was 10. Um, and it, it's so fun. It's sort of fun because your hero actually <laughs> did publish his first book uh, as a teenager. And that's I Gordon know. Foreman, right? <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 it's funny because I, I, I've been telling this story too, how Gordon, so Gordon, and I realized I showed the slide about Gordon. So Gordon published his first book when he was 13 years old. But the, the other crazy part is that he went to my elementary school. Okay. Whoa. Yes. So I grew up, um, you know, I grew up in Montreal, Canada, and I went to a small Jewish school in Montreal, Canada. And so I grew up thinking that it was totally normal for a Montreal Jewish kid to become a best-selling novelist. And that was totally fine. And so, because that's what I had seen. It's like talking about the <laughs> importance of representation that I was just like, yes, he has published books. Therefore I too can write books and publish books. And that is fine. It's totally normal. So I just kept, you know, I wrote and I published my first book at 23. I had such confidence in my ability to do that because I had seen it done before me. And, and now you're both, 
essential parts of the scholastic family. I mean, like, you know, you are that you are the scholastic, you know, family now uh, with your with your books. And I don't know, you are part of that scholastic family. Welcome. And, and, and I want and I, because when you mentioned the things, the books that inspired you as a kid, I mean, uh, Animorphs, Catherine Applegate is now a uh, scholastic graphic novel series. And, yeah, uh, I need to. I need to <laughs> call my agent. I think after yeah. this call, <laughs> uh, baby, baby, babysitters club, Sweet Valley Twins—they've all become graphic novels. Yeah. So like, oh my gosh, you could finally do like all these illustrations for the favorite books that you had. As a yeah, I feel like that would be the coolest thing ever. Like just like I love these books. Like obviously, when you're a kid, like flash forward to me when I was ten, reading this book, and like. Imagine, like, 35-year-old me bust through the door, like, back to the future. I don't think any kid got that reference that I just made. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> okay, shout out to any of you who got that reference. And I'm just like, hey, Anu, guess what? In 30 years or in 25 years, you're going to illustrate the graphic novel version of that. Like, kid me would have been like, what are you talking about, right? Did you, draw, did you draw pictures from the books that you read when you were a kid? I okay so one thing I used to really like doing was a Animorphs fan art of the characters I would draw them and then I used to make this is gonna sound kind of funny I would make a floor plan of Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield's house <laughs> <laughs> like I just think because like the, the author was so amazing at describing everything they had a Spanish style kitchen and Elizabeth's <laughs> room was like purple I know, and she was at the Unicorn Club, and they were always wearing purple. So I was like, okay. And Elizabeth liked to study, so she have an, like she have a desk with all her books, and then Jessica's room would be a mess, and there'd just be like clothes everywhere. And there's this one book um, when they were in ballet or in the ballet performance, and I used to draw their ballet outfits because like I was like <laughs> the the main girl, like whatever the lead character's outfit was probably really shiny and had diamonds everywhere. It was a whole thing. Love this. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, because I think kids actually do that. But I really think that's wonderful because you can now look at yourselves years later and be able to see how much that those things that you were doing, you know, admiring your, your Gordon Corman or Catherine Applegate or whoever it may have been, have led you on further on, kept you going to, yeah. to become, you know, who you are. And now mm -hmm. there's other kids who are probably doing the same thing with all of your books, Sarah, right? They're being inspired by upside down or or to, how can I put a spin on a classic trope or a classic right. idea, which you do so, so beautifully. <laughs> um, you've got, I love your Best Wishes series because you get to work with some amazing authors. Tell us about the new book that's coming with Hannah Kahn. Oh, it's so fun. Um, so in case, okay, so just a little bit about the Best Wishes series. In every book, um, a girl, a different girl gets a magic bracelet and can make one wish. Um, and so in book one, which I wrote on my own, uh, Becca, it's set in New York City, and Becca wishes that she uh, had, um, everyone wants to be her friend and suddenly everyone wants to be her friend. Book two I wrote with D Debbie Rigaud. Um, and it's at in Ohio, and she wishes that she wasn't the middle sister, and it's a kind of a Freaky Friday switch. And then in book three, which I wrote with Christina Sundram, but um, she wishes to redo a day, and then she it's like a Groundhog Day type time loop that she gets stuck in. And in book four, um, which is with Henna, uh, uh, Maya wishes that she's in charge of her club at school, and suddenly ends up first in charge of her club, then in charge of her class, then in charge of her school, and then she becomes the president of the United States. <laughs> so <laughs> it's set in DC. Um, and the, the other fun thing about this series that is one of my favorite parts is that as each, like the, the, the first girl sends uh, the bracelet and a notebook to the next girl and so and starts a text chain with the two of them and then in the third book all three of them are on a text chain and by the fourth book all four of them are on the text chain so the girls from the early one are included in the next book oh, and cool. um so hen and i wrote the dialogue for addy and for the characters for two and three but i sent it to christina and debbie i was like would you guys mind just like looking it over and making sure and so they like just approved all the dialogue this week and so because we're still we're right now in final page proofs of um of, of book four so it's just been we're on a we have a text chain the four of us it's been it's just really fun uh experience i love i love co-writing with people 
Yeah. The only sad part about this book was that we didn't have the experience. I know. I know. (laughs) I want to do more events. I'm like, I'm just (laughs) talking. I'm like, I'm going to write the Vancouver people and say that I should really come to Vancouver. (laughs) Oh, who doesn't want to go to Vancouver? It's so beautiful up there. My dad lives there too. So it it feels like easy. And I just, Um, I was just in LA for uh, Hair Oil Magic launch. So, which was such a like, I mean, and that was like kind of like, I just kind of forced myself to go. It wasn't like, Hi, we're the publisher. We're going to take you. I'm like, mm-hmm. publisher, I'm going to get there myself, but can you help hook it up at a store? And I was so scared because I was just like, why did I do this? Like, I only know a handful of people in LA. And people came out. So that was really nice. That is That's wonderful. Awesome. You know, I uh, one more thing about uh, Hannah Khan, real quick, is that her newest book that came out is a book called Drawing Dina. And I know I want to tell you, uh, I you may not have read this book yet. It just came out. I thought, because I knew we were going to do this this talk, I, as I was reading it, I thought so much about you because Drawing Dina is about a young girl, a uh, South Asian girl who is, art is everything to her. And it is, for her experience in the book, is very difficult within her culture because there are expectations for what she is going to become and what she is going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and art is definitely not one of them. Do you have any experience like that? Or can you comment about what that has been like for you? Um, Yeah, I think my parents knew that I loved to draw when I was a kid. Like, they're always just like, oh, okay, like, she's really good at art. That's nice, right? That's a nice hobby. Um, (laughs) Hobby, right? Um, So then when I was in high school, and it was time to think about what I wanted to do in university. I think my dad was just like, oh, no, you're going to be a lawyer. Like, of course you are. Like, we want you to be a lawyer. Mostly my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, dad, so, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to be a lawyer. I kind of want to, because that's like, you know, digital art was starting to like really take off, 3D art. I didn't know what I wanted to do specifically. I didn't know I was going to end up in the video game industry. I was more so thinking animation. Actually, I was thinking more so graphic design, and then it kind of turned into animation. And obviously, I think my parents were nervous. Um, They didn't ever flat out say, no, you can't do that. Um, I unfortunately have friends who have had that experience where they wanted to do fashion design, anything really creative, but they were met with a lot of pushback from their parents. And it's like too common that like people are hit, like if you don't get that sense of kind of, you know, if you're not, don't feel motivated and supported by your own family, obviously that's not going to take you very far. Like some people make it happen, but for some people, family means so much, right? And they end up doing other things. So I, I, I'm glad my parents didn't really come hard on me like that, but they were definitely nervous. And I think they were worried, which is understandable. Um, but I ended up going to um, local university here, Simon Fraser University, which has like a great, like they have a, they have an amazing like web design, graphic design program. And so I went there and then I ended up studying animation at Capuano in North Vancouver uh, for two years to kind of supplement it. And I got a job like I was OK. Um, that's not to say that like life is set after that like obviously being a creative is a lot of hard work you have to continuously keep working money doesn't fly off like you just it's not like yeah i'm great i'm rich woo like it's not like that right away it, like with any job you have to work hard and you have to you can't give up um as sarah was saying like working on multiple things at the same time that's kind of like an artist too like you got to kind of obviously protect yourself from burnout but you also really need to just like kind of yeah, balance things out and that way more people see your work. It's a good way to network, meet new people in the industry. And that's how I've been able to grow my career. Thank you both so much. You know, I want to say one more thing, Sarah, real quick is you you talked about Jonah and uh, being on that cover with Abby. And I think that is such a great idea for that to happen at some point in time, because <laughs> I love these books and I, and I hand sell them to kids all the time. It can sometimes be a challenge to get mm-hmm some boys to be able to explore a book that, you know, color palette alone might feel right. like it's not, you know, that's not, I'm not trying to gender it, but it happens, you know? Yeah. And I, But Jonah is such an essential part of those stories. It, it would be a great way to 
be a window opener for um, uh, some new uh, young minds to be able to explore these books which you create because you are the queen. You are the queen of series. Uh, you're trying to take over Stuart Gibbs' series, <laughs> emperor of series uh, role with all of these great. <laughs> I know he's your Hi. friend. So. <laughs> um, I really appreciate both of you uh, taking your time to be able to inspire and talk to young people. Um, this will be available to watch on YouTube, on our webpage, uh, as well as our YouTube page, and um, to you know get inspiration. Thank you for sharing also some of your secrets about how you actually create. Any final words for the kids out there? You want to go first, Sarah? <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Keep reading. Keep reading, <laughs> absolutely. Keep drawing, don't give up. If you love art, don't give up on it. No. Same with writing. Absolutely. And also, it's fun to appreciate other people, right? Like, I know that's what I love. You guys both appreciate other artists and other authors and read other people's books because you can get inspiration for that, which is a great thing. So mm -hmm. thank you both so much. Have everyone have a great day and um, looking forward to it. And Sarah, we're looking forward to having you to the store, which happens quite frequently. So make sure you check out Children's Book World, childrensbookworld.com, because we're going to have you here to talk about your, uh, talk about this book again on yes, uh, coming up. So. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks so much.